And we're back. <laughs> wow, that was a <clears throat> three-day break in there. I sort of... We held our breath that entire time. <laughs> From Monday to Thursday, we were just passed out, comatose, and I jolted wide awake like some sort of vampire. <laughs> we were legally dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, thanks to Squarespace for even bringing us back on a Thursday. It's a short week for you guys, and we appreciate it. And it's only because of Squarespace.com. Now, Squarespace.com, what do they do? Hell if I know. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Mr. Consumer. Huh, uh, okay. Square, <laughs> Squarespace. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even listening. <laughs> I already got it. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Squarespace lets you build websites uh, extremely easily. They let you build uh, blogs. They let you build portfolios. And it's especially useful if you want to build an e-commerce site. That's me. Does that mean you can sell stuff, <laughs> sir? Yes. Uh, you're hamming it up a little too much, but yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> Tell me more, you magic man no, 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 from, no. The, from the north. Let me just uh, finish this presentation, sir. You're interrupting. I, I will <laughs> <Of course>. get... <laughs> Not of course, because you're still young. By yelling. golly, I can walk again. <laughs> All right. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. <laughs> Uh, Squarespace Commerce is available in the U.S., the U.K., Canada, Australia, Belgium, France, Germany, Ireland, the Netherlands, and Spain. And it lets you sell any type of product using a single interface. They have shopping carts. You can have an express checkout mode, 30-second merchant sign-up with Stripe, accepted donations, full tax and shipping rules by region. Basically, anything you need to create an online e-commerce site, Squarespace allows you to do that. That sounds pretty good. But what does it do for me? <laughs> oh, my God. I hate you. <laughs> You're the worst plant. <laughs> You're not even sticking to the <laughs> script. <laughs> that sounds pretty good, but am I still going to get paid for this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to get paid. Don't worry, man. Uh, Squarespace makes it easy, makes it simple, and it's also super affordable. And it's extra affordable if you use coupon code JAKE. Are you happy, man? You got <laughs> your own little coupon What did code. I do to deserve that? <laughs> Literally nothing. <laughs> you can get 10% off your order if you use coupon code JAKE. Squarespace also launched some cool stuff for musicians this month, too. So if you're a musician and you want a site for your uh, band or your own sing- solo act, you can do that as well. So please check out squarespace.com uh, and uh, enjoy this episode. Thanks for listening, everyone. I really like this episode, actually. It got... Things got real. <laughs> Things get really real. Things get really real, and uh, we really, really feel <laughs> that you'll appreciate yep. it. Yep. Spoiler alert. <laughs> we open up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Enjoy the show. When I find myself in times of trouble, Amir and Jake make fun of me. Listen to their podcast and seize the cheek. And in the time allotted, Show.com. Check it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Was he making fun of you at the end there? At the, what do you mean making fun of me? I feel like you talk like that sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, right. Nah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> nah, man. That was John Lennon. That's crazy. <laughs> that no. was nuts, I'm, man. No, it was actually uh, two what? guys named Max and Evan. Yeah, but John <laughs> Lennon, John Lennon made that song. <laughs> Yeah, he made the original of that. It was like a parody, you know. It's crazy. Were... <laughs> he's a Beatle and he's a fan of the podcast. <laughs> Holy shit, you're in wrong in so many ways. <laughs> you yeah. thought Let It Be's original lyrics were Seize the Cheese? I really think that John, I think that Paul, I think that Ringo, <laughs> George, and, uh, and the Yoko rest. Ono. <laughs> I think they all... They all like the podcast. <laughs> I hope this starts a uh, a, a floodgate of uh, parody theme songs. That'd I, be cool. Those, that's was a, they're already like my new favorite, and I I've only listened to one. I really like. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's because I grew up on Weird Al. That one really tickled my fancy. Yeah, you like Weird Al? Yeah. I didn't know that about you. Yeah, because I'm Jewish and nerdy (laughs) and in between the ages of 20 and 60. (laughs) Yeah, I could imagine you liking Weird Al. Oh, you didn't like Weird Al? (laughs) I didn't know. Yeah, I liked the original version (laughs) of Gangsta's Paradise. I really did. I was cool. I was coolio (laughs) for Halloween specifically. 
Uh, anyway, this is If I Were You, the only advice podcast on the internet hosted by us. I'm Amir. And I'm Jake. Seize the cheese. Seize the cheese. Someone, I mean, he did it really Seize well. Seize the cheese. So why would you be? Seize the cheese. Why are you just trying to highlight how there bad you are? There will be a you. Do you seize the cheese? Yeah. Remember the email we got last week? It was <laughs> one of my favorite emails that we've ever gotten. It was uh, some guy that's uh, subject constructive criticism. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the body said something to the effect of, you guys are great. Uh, don't ever sing. It's not funny. It's just annoying. So in conclusion, uh, when you sing, it's not funny. It's annoying, and nobody likes it. <laughs> now my fear that we're now we're talking about that email, people are just gonna be like, actually, I agree with that. <laughs> Because I can't handle that blow to my ego. You have to understand, every time I sing, I think I sound like an angel. Yeah, and that everyone else thinks I sound like an angel, I'm, too. I'm just tone deaf, that's all. <laughs> well, so we will actually, I think we're never going to sing again. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Dude. Holy shit. Jesus. That was angelic. <laughs> You notice in the you uh, it? <clears throat> we did that same joke. This we're recording this after the the live episode that we shot on uh, Saturday at Comic Con when Pete started singing opera. We both said at the same time, oh, "Holy yeah. shit!" Which is like a bit that we both do. So we like both did it at the same time to right. Pete. It was a it was a beautiful. <laughs> it was a proud moment. It really was a beautiful, beautiful. It was thing. humbling. It, it was, was <laughs> more than anything. I hate that so much. People say it was humbling. You're. God, they must relish the chance to say it was humbling. <laughs> I really No am one hum- ever says that when they're not bragging, right? I think I am humbled. I was humbled. I really was. I was humbled. Yeah. You know what? Humble, humble, humble people never actually say that they're humbled. Yeah. You don't have to say you're yeah. humbled if you're humble. <laughs> I think I'm the most humble, actually. <laughs> yeah. More than anything, uh, I was humbled. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I think I'm better than everyone because yeah. of this. And that's how humble I am. <laughs> Um, so the way this podcast works, uh, oh, have we not said that? No, we haven't yet. Cool. People write in with problems, sticky situations, conundrums, and we do our best to, uh, help them out or at least publicly shame them into being a better person <laughs> or just publicly shame them not into being a better person or just to publicly shame them. So we feel better about ourselves which or I think is what happens a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. It's more for like uh, entertainment value than for anything else. If you we think about really it, we really are humbled by the amount of emails that we've been getting. And, uh, <laughs> I think having a podcast really keeps me humble. Yeah. It humbles me more than anything. <laughs> Um, so should we get to the a first couple me questions for this bumblebee? <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> you do, you don't know. Yeah. I do think I need to leave <laughs> for the humble me bumblebee rhyme. I'm not going to call it a joke <laughs> <laughs> just because it rhymed. Doesn't make it poetry. It wasn't. I really, I feel like I've been writing exclusively in rhymes for the last at least year. Yeah. Because that's what the way our videos are turning into. Yeah, the slam videos poetry. Of podcasts, I, there's something funny about rhyming. I love rhymes. Um, I just noticed two things. One, I didn't. Or, I usually organize the questions by what I think the best order that we should uh, answer them, and I haven't done that yet. I, I did feel a little underprepared when we clicked on record. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised. So this one happened. is this one is going to be a little more raw. And uh, this, is also, this is the latest we've ever done a podcast, aside from the one that we did when we were getting drunk. Yeah, yeah, it's it's dark. It's, it's dark out. Yeah, it's like eight or nine p.m. Yeah, the it's eight thirty. It's eight thirty p.m. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Damn. I feel crazy. It's <laughs> like. A uh, candle lit apartment now. <laughs> Amir <laughs> is burning incense. He's he's lit some candles. Uh, he's more than shirtless. <laughs> he's uh, bottomless. <laughs> he answered the door in uh <laughs> in a weird robe that was tied just so it was his dick and nipples were hanging out. It's like he tied it backwards. Jake started saying something. I put uh, his index. I put my index finger over his lips and led him to the microphone. <laughs> I said, don't say a word. Yeah, and then he locked the door behind me. I don't know what to do. <laughs> then I, uh, I asked him if he liked the Beatles. Jake said no, and I started playing the theme song. Oh. <laughs> His dick and nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Your dick and nipples are out. Seize the cheese. Seize the cheese. My dick, my nipples, my slick dimples. My, my pink pimples. 
<laughs> it's not simples. No, it's difficult. Uh, should we get started? For the love of God, <laughs> we please. We already have, right? Yeah, I think we answered a question. If anything, we should stop. Um, all right, first question uh, comes from a lady. We'll call her Robin. Robin. This is a real email from a real person, but we changed their name to preserve their anonymity. Correct. Dear Jake and Amir, I'll cut right to it. I'm a chick who really likes sex. It's not like I'm the town trollop who just sleeps with randos. I've always known guys pretty well for fairly long periods of time before sleeping with them. But after getting out there out of a three-year relationship and being the single lady again, now I'm worried about my number creeping up even higher. How many guys is too many guys to sleep with over a lifetime? Do you ever ask a girl her number, and how much does it really matter? Thanks, Robin. Ooh. Interesting question. A girl's number. A girl's number. So when you ask for a girl's number, that's like because you want to have a phone call with her later, right? Oh, that's funny. You're at a bar. Like, hey, yeah. what's your number? <laughs> 14. Okay. And I'd appreciate you didn't judge me on it, asswipe. Oh, no. I was uh, asking for your phone number. Oh, well, I'm extension 14. <laughs> I'm, actually, I, uh, I know someone at Pac Bell. Uh, my, no, my phone number is 14. You know how emergencies are 911? Yeah, well, I'm 1 Can 4. Can you imagine? <laughs> the the find of the century. You really won the lottery with that chick. Well, I think the find of the century would be finding a girl whose phone number is her sexual number. That's that'd be cool. Yeah, like a girl that slept with eight hundred and eighteen million people, uh four hundred and thirty one thousand uh one one point oh eight five. God, That's my phone you're number. You're nerdy. You're so nerdy <laughs> that you could that you could do that. Well it was number. really it was really bad. So if there are actual nerds <laughs> out there, that was a way, way, way off. You're so you're so uncool. You're so uncool that you're apologizing to the nerds who might call you out for and, for not getting that number right. And you're so cool that you didn't think to call me out on it. I'm so cool that I didn't, I stopped listening as soon as I knew you were going to make a math joke. <laughs> well, I have a, actually have a, a formula in my brain after reading that question. Do you want to try to address this question first? Uh, the basic the, the, the gist is she's afraid she slept with too many guys, and that if a guy asks her how many guys she slept with, that her number, right. aka the amount of people that she slept with is too high do you ask girls for their uh number i personally do not so you don't care how many guys a girl slept with before you no not at all but i know like i think that there's i guess it's just different for different people like there are people that will ask and care and then there are people that won't ask and care and then there are people that uh, i mean it just as long as you're cool with it then it doesn't matter then if you then you'll, you'll just find somebody that's cool with it well, it's, it's different depending on how old you are. So this is the formula I've come up with. <laughs> Jake's already asleep. I, I am, uh, I'm using the candles to burn down the apartment. Amir's robe is currently on fire. His dick and, his dick and nipples, nipples are just coated in grease. They went right up. <laughs> like a woman burning her highly flammable bra, my dick and nipples just eviscerated. Your flaming dimples are... Oh. <laughs> It's gone. <laughs> I'm dickless, right, what's nipless. The, what's the formula, you All right. fucking nerd? Formula. How many girl how many guys would you say is a lot to sleep with in a year? I would say ten is pretty aggressive. Ten is a lot in a year. Yeah. For a person to sleep with ten people in a yeah. year, that's a lot. I think that's an I think that <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be considered in the pretty high territory. Okay. Okay. I'm not saying anything. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so uh, you do the math at 10 a year, I would say, on average, a girl becomes sexually active around age 18. Okay. Oh, my God. Really? This really is like math class. I faded. I, okay. just, like, I dipped out just there okay. for a second. Holy so shit. Get through to me. Come on. So I really want this to work. <laughs> Mr. Blumenfeld, don't give up on me. I know, I, know you, I can get it, Mr. Blumenfeld. I know you just want to send me to detention like all my other teachers. <laughs> no. I want to I wanna be in charge of you. You're worth it. So... Okay, so your age is X, variable X. Okay. So X minus 18 times 10 is what your number should be. So let's say, for example, for example, a woman is 25. Right. So she's been active, sexually active for an for average seven, seven years, years times it. 10, 70. That's a pretty high number, but I would say in the uh, not too crazy zone. Wow. So unless your number is higher than uh, your age minus 18 times 10, you don't have anything to worry about. And I, uh, huh. yeah. So, for example, Jake, your number that you wouldn't have to worry about would be your age, uh, 28, 28 minus, minus 18, 10, 10 times 10, 100. So, like, 
That's like a. I'm being like very liberal too. Like I, I think that's I, that, sleeping with a hundred girl for ten years. I, that's why I think your formula is off. I feel like. But doesn't ten seem like not that much for a year? I mean, it, obviously, it is a lot. Like I, 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 I for one do not sleep with ten people a year. But 10, 10 people a year doesn't seem like that aggressive. I guess if you're thinking of people being like sexually active and single from 18 to 20. Yeah, that's, what that's where that's where like, you get tripped up because if yeah, you're in you a get, relationship, that takes years off. I was out off. of the game for like yeah. for years at a time. I mean, I was still getting laid. Yeah, no, you wrong, were still in like, the game. Not at the same yeah. rate. <laughs> I was. I, I had to slow down. Yeah, you were playing a different game. Right. You're slowed down in a relationship rate, still much well, higher than the average. Do you human. care if you were, if you were with a girl? Would you say how many people have you slept with? I wouldn't ask, but if she said a number higher than ten a year, ten. A, I get. Should we say five a year? I don't know. I mean, I don't think I wouldn't. I I won't get on board with this <laughs> at all. I don't think it matters. I, I like I've been asked my number. Yeah, but you've never asked somebody else's. Yeah, even when I, I wouldn't even ask it back. I would like I think it's just a bad idea to start talking about sexual previous sexual partners. It doesn't right. even matter if her number is high or low. It's just like I don't want to think about people that she slept with. Well, what's scarier to you, zero or a hundred? I guess I'd much rather sleep with a slut than a virgin. Interesting. I think I'd be the opposite. You would want to take a girl's virginity right now? Right now, like, yeah. Oh, you mean after the podcast or why? <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. I brought, I brought in this chick. I'm you already in incense. I'm already dicked and nipped out. <laughs> uh, I mean, then it like means something. It's like you took someone's virginity. You owe them. Yeah, zero is very... I guess my, my, my point is that I'd rather uh, be with someone who hasn't been with many, 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 many other people. I'd rather so, be with someone. Less is more for but me. But it sounds like her. if she's this concerned, her number is not going to be impossibly high. Yeah, no. And I think uh, the number or the subject line to this email is seven. So I don't even know. if Is that true? The, yeah, I don't know if that's Let her number. See. Subject. Wow. Subject seven. Yeah. If I, think, I think if it's in the single digits, you don't have to worry about it ever. And then in your lifetime, use my well, I do formula. remember being like in – when I was like in high school when not a lot of people were even having sex yet. Oh, uh, like yeah. Like a number like – Well, that's my, what it is. If you're 18, then your number should be zero. Yeah. I had a friend whose girlfriend had slept with 12 people, and we were still in high school. Damn, that's a lot. <laughs> at that time, it was a lot. But like – and it mattered to, to him. He's like, do you know like what I have to fucking think about? Like I have to think about her <coughs> – fucking 12 dudes yeah not at once but like still at least six of them were probably at once because <laughs> we've only you know been alive for 16 years <laughs> uh but so yeah like it matters more when you're younger now i'm in my late 20s it's just like i don't even think about it at all i just anybody i meet there's no chance of me being like hey are you like a virgin or anything like, yeah no i just assume they've had many sexual partners right and it doesn't matter so that's my answer. It doesn't matter. And my answer is X minus 18 <laughs> times 10. <laughs> it really is. This would also happen on a math test where Amir says X minus 18 times 10. And I say, who gives a fuck? And I would pass that and you would fail. And it would also happen on a date where you would say, who gives a fuck? And you'd go home with a girl and I would be left with uh, by myself doing calculations on the back of a napkin. So you're, <laughs> what we're trying to say is... I did better at school, but you did better at life. What we're trying to say is, yo, do you. Yeah. <laughs> but don't do it too often. I mean, I, I, you really want to you, say... not them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, my Zer. God. You're short-circuiting. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. That was a good answer. Yeah. Or a good... X, X minus 18 times 7. <laughs> That's the name of this episode. Nobody listens to it. Oh, uh, we should have called it Dicks and Nips. We'll, well call we can it. still call it whatever we want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll call it Dicks and Nips. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Next question. Next. Uh, this one comes from, we'll call him Ted. Ted. Hey, dudes. I recently downloaded Tinder, and I know you've answered a few questions about Tinder and have touched on the subject a fair bit. Someone wrote in and asked what he should say to a girl once he gets a match, and my question is similar. You gave him the advice, just a simple hi, then the girl's name. No cheesy pickup lines required, which makes sense because it's already obvious she's into you, or at the very least finds you physically attractive. My problem is I received no reply after I messaged two girls that I matched with. 
First one, I just said hi in the girl's name. The second one, I decided to say hi, girl's name. And then, add me on Facebook if you want to chat. And I gave her my full name. No reply from either of them. It's been weeks since the first one and a few days since the second. Should I be saying something different? Also, my profile is just pictures, no about me part. Would it be wise to add to my profile to say a little bit more about myself? I just don't understand why girls would match and then not want to chat. Any advice on updating my Tinder game would be hashtag dope. My man. <laughs> my man. Delete your Tinder, buddy. <laughs> what? My man. You out the game, son. That's it. You blew it, dog. <laughs> Everyone on Tinder is talking about you. With that creepy-ass Facebook shit. <laughs> You're the Facebook guy. <laughs> Everyone knows you as that. You don't need an about me. You're the Facebook guy. Hey, girl's name. Just being normal. Here's my full name. Add me on Facebook and we will chat. <laughs> That's what the Tinder chat is. It's a chat. <laughs> Why do you want to chat on Facebook? That's what the something's for. What that's that what the, oh, that's Mad Men. Oh, yeah. that's you, never say, you never say thank you. That's what the money's for. Oh, yeah. So that's what the Tinder chat is for. Uh, no, you're a good man. You're an honest man. You're, um, you have no shame, clearly, <laughs> because not only did you say to this girl, add me on Facebook and we'll chat, you wrote into the podcast and told us <laughs> that you did that like it wasn't weird. <laughs> Well, that's why people are emailing us because they don't they're they're in a they're in a sticky situation, a difficult place, and they don't know what's it's weird. True. What's I do normal. remember when I first downloaded Tinder. When I first downloaded Tinder, guys, I know it's like imagine tw- imagine twenty twelve. Was it you, even twenty twelve? No, no, imagine guys, January of twenty thirteen. I have Obama was the president. <laughs> it has not been that long, and I've already fucked double this girl's number just on <laughs> Tinder alone. Okay, uh, I double Robin's number. All right, sorry. No, anyway, anyway. Um, that's not true. It's probably more. Uh, <laughs> I just don't know math. What I'm trying to say here, Amir will figure it out, is that Tinder was like, it, it, a lot of people are just still figuring it out because it's a new app. And it's also, online dating is like a new frontier for many people. When I first matched with someone, I really did not know what to say. And there was a, the girl in the picture was wearing a San Francisco uh, baseball hat. And I messaged her and I wrote... <laughs> Or no, oh, she was like she was wearing like a 49ers hat, and I wrote "Go Niners," <laughs> <laughs> and then she wrote, "Are you from San Francisco?" And then I just wrote, "No." <laughs> <laughs> Will you hook up with me? I'm a Dodger fan. I Will did, you? I did bend her over in uh, the Levy's bathroom, but oh, God. I'm kidding. That didn't happen. She didn't want it. Uh, I begged her. So what I'm what I'm saying is that like you're learning. There's a learning curve. Don't ask them to add you on Facebook. Just write hey and their name. They're not all going to respond. So why? Okay, so here's a question. As somebody who's not used Tinder uh, or somebody who's new to Tinder, why match and not chat? Which one is it? Why match and not chat? No, are you new to Tinder or have you not used Tinder? (laughs) Me personally? Yeah. Uh, I tried it in Seattle. My dude! (laughs) (laughs) Oh God, I love hearing that. But I, I, uh, I swiped. So many girls know that I ended up not matching with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> you swiped all of Seattle to the left. <laughs> it, uh, it was definitely you a saw learning the city curve. Of Seattle, and you just went uh, left. I erred on the side of caution, unlike <laughs> this guy who uh, took it a little bit too aggressively. Uh, so, oh, man. what now? Uh, you match with someone and they don't chat. I th- well, I think some some people just like see your main picture and they're like, oh, that's kind of yeah, this guy, and they yes you, and then if you match, they look at your other pictures, and maybe you're it turns out you're not their type, or they just don't feel maybe they don't check their Tinder very often, or maybe uh, there's a million reasons. It's a it's a really, <coughs> I think that's why it's such a cool app is because it's so like playful and the stakes are so low. You can just match someone and there's and never talk to them. So yeah. how many of your matches would you say you never speak to? Seventy percent of them. Wow. That's high. A lot. So you're like, I find this person attractive. They find me attractive. Seven times out of ten, I'm not even going to fucking start a conversation. F- five times out of ten, I don't even start a conversation. And then the other times, like then two times, I'll message someone and they don't respond to me. Oh, if I you see. guys can believe it out there. <laughs> can you imagine looking at a photo of me, hearing my, hi, girl's name, please add me on Facebook, and then being so <laughs> creeped out? My profile picture is uh, Amir's dick and nipples, <laughs> the robe tied open. Uh, and then, and then the other three times we start a conversation, and then honestly, like I feel like maybe one, one out of every ten I actually hang out with. Oh, 
So I guess still. But I'm 100 percent on getting laid with when I hang out. <laughs> oh, I didn't. When didn't I meet up, ask. yeah, it happens. <laughs> so don't 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 worry about that. Yeah, boss. don't worry about that conversion rate. All right, that's the big one. That's the one that that's the one that matters. Yeah, anybody can match. Not uh, anyone can snatch. <laughs> <laughs> boss, how do you like that? <laughs> this is you talking to a Tinder date. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, add me on Facebook. After we've slept together, she's just really, really regretting her decision, gathering her stuff and leaving my apartment. Where are you going? So uh, basic advice here is that less is more. Uh, don't take it off Tinder right away. And if you do, don't take it off Tinder onto Facebook. I think the goal is to eventually take it off Tinder onto text messages, right? right? Yeah, I would never take it onto Facebook. You move to text. And also... Uh, I, you're overthinking it, I think. If he's like, would it be wise to make an about me? It, it's just like, it, it doesn't really matter. As long as your pictures are pretty good and you're funny when you start messaging. An about me is basically going to, is a tiebreaker, right? Yeah. I so guess the picture is like, uh, but the about me can push you to the left Definitely right. don't have like a genuine, I would agree with that. Def, I would definitely not have like a genuine like, hey, my name's... What's this dude's name? Uh, Ted. Ted. Hey, my name is Ted. Uh, I am six foot tall and I like soccer. <laughs> Though that does make you sound hot. Maybe that's <laughs> that's it. Fuck it. Actually, hold on. <laughs> gonna, six feet and love soccer. Jesus Christ. I'm going to make my about me. Hey, my name is Ted. I'm six <laughs> foot tall and I love soccer. And then underneath it, it says your name and your age. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Ted. You can call me Jake, and I love soccer. Yeah, my advice is to chill, be cool, don't take it to Facebook. You got this. You my dude. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, relax. Mm-hmm. Relax a little. I think I should go back to Seattle. Maybe some girls have added themselves yeah. uh, since I've been gone. I would love. I think you should download Tinder here in New York. Uh, I'm kind of afraid to. Why? I don't know. I don't know what it is. I think I'm afraid that I'll see someone I know or something. I see people I know all the time. And I know. And they see you too, and you see they know you see them. So you're like, it's like a... First of all, there's nothing shameful about it, okay? Right. So, but second, for some reason in my brain, it's like, I don't... Like, I would be embarrassed if someone screen-capped my Tinder profile picture and put it on our subreddit. <laughs> That's... <yeah. laughs> And that fear is not worth <laughs> meeting my potential soulmate. I guess, wow. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> Would you be embarrassed if that happened? No, I mean, I talk about Tinder so openly. There's like nothing at this point, Tinder-wise, that could embarrass me. Yeah, I don't know. Although, I, actually, there was one time where like I was at a bar and somebody, I like lost a bet and the bet was, the stakes were like, we had to trade phones and I, he could send a message from Tinder. Yeah. Uh as as me and he did he sent it to this oh my god this is the most embarrassing thing in the world <laughs> so he sent a message which was like totally not even that funny he just wrote like wanna bang question mark to a tinder match and then she responded does a mirror have tinder too and then i then like i wrote back something really lame and then i wrote back again to her later i was like hey i'm sorry and i explained what had happened and she never responded to that so if that whole message got screen capped i'd feel pretty <laughs> that i would feel embarrassed about but most of the time my tinder matches are uh, i don't know whatever yeah but would you be if you're on a date like would do you would you keep tinder as a main icon on your home screen um, or do you hide it in the back pages it's on the second screen. Yeah. I don't want it on the front. See why? There's a little. There's that's that's the feeling I feel times a hundred. I don't know, but we're. It's like a sense of camaraderie. I was I was on a plane once and I saw like it, we landed and everyone's turning on their phones. Like, like the girl two two rows in front of me like saw it and like turned on her phone and went right onto Tinder. I was like, all right, somebody that I can relate to this person. I feel like the girl that I would like is a girl who is using Tinder reluctantly. There are plenty of girls on there that are using it is reluctantly. It, is there a reluctant Tinder app? I should say that I'm not in a relationship anymore. A lot of people probably think I'm a huge creep uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hold 
Holy shit, Jake is evil. Yeah, wow, Jake really rubbed off on a mirror. He went to Seattle and tried to cheat on his girlfriend. No, it's fine. She doesn't listen to this podcast. Hey, if you're listening, don't tell her. Swipe right. The thing is, Amir swiped right everyone in Seattle, and he just didn't get a match. So now he's protected himself, saying he swiped no. Nary a single match. Uh, uh, no, yeah. Single Amir on Tinder. That's your goal. That is, I mean, that's my dream, is to get you to download Tinder <coughs> tonight after we stop the podcast. For some reason, I only, I like when we were on a road trip, I was like, oh, it'd be fun to try it in a new city. But like, I don't know about doing it in a Maybe, place where I currently live. Yeah, there is something about being in a city that's like, it's your download. It's not about dating. It's about like having an adventure, meeting a local who can like show you around and like have a party for the night. And New York, it's since we live here, it's like um, <coughs> I'm lonely. Yeah, and I want to meet someone. <laughs> or even do you want to go on a pizza date with me? <laughs> I think even more shameful than saying I'm lonely is saying I'm horny, <laughs> which is what Tinder actually is. When you say I'm lonely on Tinder, that's what it means. <laughs> it's. There's no emotional right. loneliness. It's it's you making a Facebook status update that says I'm horny tonight. <laughs> and that's, the, ex- <laughs> that's exactly why I don't want to do it. Right. It's letting everyone know that you're horny. <laughs> it's an emotion you don't want people to know you have. Is anyone else also horny? <laughs> Uh, this girl's horny, but not attractive to me. This yep. girl's also horny. Ooh, this girl's attractive and horny. <laughs> oh, she doesn't think I'm attractive or horny. All right, let's keep playing. Ooh, we got a match. We both think we're hot and horny. Uh, I'm not going to message her. Five horny. times out of ten, the hot and horny match doesn't matter. Oh, horny's the saddest word in the world. <laughs> I really am Hey, horny. Seattle, I'm feeling horny. Not for you, not for you, not for you, not for you. Uh-oh, no one in Seattle's feeling horny for me either. <laughs> That's the about me. <laughs> is anyone in Seattle horny tonight? My name is Amir. I'm 30. I'm feeling pretty <laughs> horny. Uh, I'm in Seattle for a good 12 hours. And uh, yeah, let me know if you're horny too. <laughs> I am. I am TTF, and I don't want to become a cuckold on this on this a, on this app right here. So, LMK, if you are 22 to 29 and horny as I am, I am, I am down to be horny with you. Is anyone horny in a 50 mile radius? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking 100 mile radius. That's how horny I am. <laughs> Holy shit, I match with someone from Portland. She's a porny horny for this Bjorny Gorny. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> oh, God. You're spitting water. I should not have sipped water while you were saying it. You're a horny Bjorny. <laughs> hey, the name's Bjorny. I'm uh, pretty horny and. Uh, let us let me know if you are too. This was corny. <laughs> let me know if you're down to be horny with me. Ah, <sighs> does that count as the break? Tinder? No, it doesn't <clears throat> actually because I had. I, there, are we talk? Is it break time? <clears throat> yeah, it's like past break time. Man, then I would really like to talk about <laughs> our experience in uh, New Haven this weekend at Yale. Oh yeah, after Comic Con, we went to Yale and did a show there. We did a show at Yale Hillel House. Um, that was that was my. Wheel Hillel House. <laughs> I mean, very nice. We were in our element. <laughs> yeah, just uh, just a room full of Jews. I I never felt more. I'm like the opposite of Hitler. I just only feel comfortable in a room yeah. full of Jews. If we see yarmulkes, we Th- know those are my people. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and New Haven, Yale is uh, Yale's in New Haven, my hometown, my city, my city. I actually live like two minutes from Yale, so it was really nice to be back there. And we wanted to. Kind of go out and rage, I'd say. Yeah. And would you say that you accomplished that goal? Uh, <laughs> I was definitely along for the ride. I think, oh, I guess I got wasted. But the funniest story happened to you. <laughs> Which was? <laughs> uh, you, when we got, I think we were walking, we were walking down um, Elm Street and we got, it really was a nightmare. It was a nightmare <laughs> of the street. We got tapped on the shoulder and somebody was like, yo, I know Micah. Oh and, yeah, uh, your brother. We, yeah, we met somebody that like went to school with my brother, and he invited us up into his dorm. Yeah, to smoke weed. <laughs> right. And uh, so I lived out the I lived vicariously through the experiences that I never had in college, which was smoking marijuana with uh, college kids. 
which I didn't do. Yeah, which I never did when I was in a dorm. I mean, I I smoked weed with you three times, I think, in my whole life. Right. Four times, maybe. Yeah, my weed number is very low, too. Yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely lower than 20, uh, 30 minus 18 times 10. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, these Yale dorms are like Harry Potter-esque. Yeah, they're like gothic mansions. Right. And we were up there. You are lying on a... <laughs> You're lying on a, like a lofted dorm bed with a pumpkin, a pumpkin beer maybe, and uh, a joint in your hand. Oh god! And it's like, and then there's just like a room full of kids who are like taking pictures of you. And uh, oh, I, I, I thought joining Tinder would be embarrassing, but this story is so much more oh, shameful. Yeah, you like it. I mean, it was so funny that you were like, you guys have to understand. Uh, this is like cool for you. This is exciting. This is like the highlight of college so far. Uh, for me, this is rock bottom. I'm sitting in a dorm room on a bed with a beer. This is the lowest I've ever of... felt. <laughs> oh, man. And there, and there was some girl. Everybody else is laughing. And some girl was like, God, that was dark. <laughs> Pitch black, baby. Welcome to my brain. <laughs> Tell you what. Hop onto this uh, single twin bed with me with the twin long sheets. No, you're old enough to be my fucking dad. Yeah. <laughs> Go to hell. <laughs> I felt I did feel it was fun to just do that for a night, but I did feel very out of place. I remember they invited us to a party, and I went to the bathroom with you, uh, and I was like, "Should we go?" I don't know. I feel weird. I feel old. They're like, and you're like, no, you're, uh, you were trying to hype me up, and then you're like, the saddest part about going to the party is the fact that I have to hype you up in their bathroom to <laughs> hang out with them. Like, I was, <coughs> I regressed back to my freshman year self where I'm like, should I go to this party? I don't know. I feel weird and uncomfortable, but for a completely different reason. Oh, man. I barely even remember that. I think I do now. We went into the bathroom and yeah. I was like, this is, I think I said that then. I was like, this is going to be like the best night of their lives, dude. Yeah. Oh, man. It really was the best night of my life. <laughs> and one of the weirdest nights of mine. I think, yeah, by the end, I got kicked out of the, kicked out of the frat we were partying. Yeah. Man. <laughs> you like, are. This is fucking cool for you guys, right? College yeah. humor, Jake and Amir. <laughs> like, yo, man, it's 5 a.m. We got fucking finals this finals? week. Finals? Fuck finals. This is the best night of your life, nah, right? Man, this is like, yeah, we work here. <laughs> ah, right. Hey, I'd be down to crash for the weekend if you nah, guys want to. You're like, dude, you're like 45 years <laughs> old. Nah, nah, I'm 28. You're, let's you're play it. creeping us out. If I pay for the pizza for a week would you let me stay uh, would you let me be your pizza bitch for a week let me ask the guys man you before <laughs> Dude, i go downstairs thank you thank you thank right. you i'm gonna pass out under this uh couch hey, man they're cool with uh <laughs> they're cool with it they want like 500 dollars a week for shit pizza. is it really that much <laughs> uh i'll have to ask I my mean, daddy you should go <laughs> all right yeah kids here's what you gotta know man my dad pays for everything you know what i'm saying so uh so that's food that's food that's gas that's rent cell phone my dad pays for that shit so i'm gonna hit him up he's doing me he's doing me i love my dad (laughs) your daddy pays for everything my daddy pays for me (laughs) i don't have a good job and i don't make enough money so my daddy pays for my rent yay (laughs) thanks dad Guy who sad guy who lives off his father but really appreciates it. <laughs> totally open. I go on dates with girls and uh I have to use his credit card. My daddy gave me a credit card and I use it to pay for dinner and drinks for my friends. <laughs> and my friends hang out with me because I pay for everything. And I pay for everything because of my dad. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> oh man. Mercy. Mercy. Man alive. Mercy. This is, uh, it's so weird being on the other side of these stories. I don't, I don't know how you do it, man. I'm uh, ashamed. Uh, I feel <laughs> naked of myself. It's so funny. I'm I really exposed. had to push that out of you. I, like, I, I feel like you, you just didn't even want to say it at certain points. No, I didn't want to talk about that. There's no I, need. We're gonna, but we're gonna bring that, we're gonna bring that out of you. New single Amir. <laughs> As if I just broke up three minutes ago or something. Yeah, your this apartment is just in disarray. <laughs> <laughs> Shambles. I came over, half your shit's gone, all the podcast stuff is set up, and I'm like, is everything all right? You're like, yeah, let's just record. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> ah, Christ. Did you drink all those bottles of wine? <laughs> A lot of them were already empty when I bought them, but yeah, the rosé I went through last night. <laughs> the rosé, the Prosecco, and the Riesling, all... uh. 
all this afternoon. The sweet ones, yeah. <laughs> I had a sweet tooth, I think, tonight. There's motorcycle tread marks on the carpet. Uh, don't ask about that. Christ. Christ. Uh, Christ, I'm horny. <laughs> oh, do you know how to download Tinder? Because my iPhone's been acting a real, a real fool. <laughs> my daddy got me the new 5S. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I love my new phone. <laughs> my daddy got me the first generation, the second generation, the third, the fourth, and now the fifth. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Here's an interesting part of this podcast. Well, one, the fact that we're talking about me way too much, way too much for <laughs> yeah, my liking. Like that. And uh, if you guys also think so, please let us know at if I were you show at gmail.com. Oh, we forgot to mention the email. Is that yeah. what it is? You guys can email your own uh, uh, sticky, uh, difficult, uh, conundrumical situations, mm-hmm. and we'll do our best to uh, you know, advise you to get the hell out of there. Yeah. Um, we'll definitely come up with some kind of mathematical formula to <laughs> save your goddamn life. We know it. <laughs> and uh, we usually get through more questions than this. Yeah, we're only at two. We've only done two, and we I think we're basically out of time. So, uh, yeah. Really? Good night, everyone. Two and that's it? <laughs> no, we have time for one more. All right. Well, if anything goes wrong, my dad will fix it. Yeah. <laughs> my dad fixes everything for me. Uh, yeah, I know, but I don't know if he can get through four questions. I mean, like, we just, we you don't want to get... One time I was on spring break in Mexico, and <laughs> yeah. I accidentally killed someone. <laughs> I was in a Mexican prison, and my dad came down and bailed me out. <laughs> He bribed the officials. Yeah. He gave them my mom for an hour. I think she braked them brownies or something because they were very happy and relaxed afterwards. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> oh, gosh, gosh, gosh. What's the uh, – I'm trying to think. I'm looking. I'm scanning for the best last third question that we can answer. <clears throat> All right. Let's go for another girl. All right. And now let me just look at the name of a character from, uh, uh, what's that show that we're referencing? I don't know, Robin and Ted? Uh, from uh, How I Met Your Mother. Oh. All right, Lily. Lily writes, hey guys, so I've had a huge crush on this guy for the past two years. We have the same sense of humor, music taste, and style, and everyone says we're the same person, but different genders. He's a really nice guy who's kind to everyone, so I'm not sure if he likes me or if he's just being nice. Recently, I heard my good friend saying that he was flirting with her and sending her winky faces. Should I give up on this guy and move on? Are there any signs that might help me discover how he feels? Thanks, and keep up the good work. Love, Robin. No? Lily. Lily. Shit. That's too bad. He sent your friend friend a winky face, huh? Yeah, he's probably in love with her. I guess that's all she wrote on that. Yeah. I mean, two years of a relationship is kind of fun and flirty, but a winky. Ugh. An it's emoticon hard to come back. or the emoji, you know? Which you know, is? it doesn't specify, but I want to say, a worst case scenario, it's the emoji. I really think it might be the emoji. And, uh, <clears throat> hey, RIP your relationship. <laughs> Friendship uh, or romantic. It's just uh, out the window with that one. It's over, babe. So how can a girl tell if a guy likes her or if he's just been flirting with her for the past two years? Yeah, I guess one, I read a Cosmo recently, and oh. it's like, couple ways to know when the guy's into you yeah way way number one <laughs> ma'am way number one is if he flirts with you for two years okay there's no way number two and there's no way number two <clears throat> did he flirt he flirted with you for two years no one's so nice that they'll just like well she didn't say flirt she just said that they have the same sense of humor music taste and everyone says they're the same person he's a nice guy but he's nice to everyone so it wasn't necessarily flirting. It was just a two-year friendship. Fine. Why don't you send him a winky face? Oh, flip the script. This is so like, I'm not giving real advice at all. Like, <laughs> because... I'm like reverting to my child, like, because this is so childish. <laughs> I'm just like giving like advice like I would be giving in eighth grade. But this is what you do too. Yeah, if, I guess. If you are... How do I tell if a girl likes me? Yeah, how do you tell if a girl likes you? Um... <clears throat> Man, if she, I just assume that everyone does. Do you just have a? Do you have a? Do you have like a sick? Uh, wait, do you want to retract that as sarcasm or is that real? I was, when I said I assume that everyone does. Yeah. sarcasm. <laughs> uh, I it, hope it's get. I think uh, in our age, our late twenties slash early thirties, you just have this uh, sixth sense about it. You're like, oh, I could. I can't really put my finger on it, but it seems like this person likes me. Yeah, it's weird. You just can tell. Right. But early on in life, you don't know what's going on. I guess that's true. 
Although the, it's also tougher when you've been friends with someone because I, there's often like I feel like I'm in the same circles with a lot of people and like I'm not talking to somebody and then like all of a sudden I'll like get a text or a Facebook message from someone who's like you know in my periphery but like normally wouldn't open up a dialogue yeah and I'm like oh huh I think that means something right but it'd be weird to take it from like if I'm friends with someone to like send some kind of signal of like I like you and that is the kind of thing that you get caught up in in high school because do you think there's any truth to the idea that guys are only friends with girls that they would hook up with um I guess I would have sex with literally everyone I'm friends with <laughs> there's there's no girl that you're friends with that you wouldn't sleep with no there's no <clears throat> exception no exception no <laughs> And I'm talking about my friends, loved ones, spouses, <laughs> girlfriends, no exception. Can I say what you told me at that diner once? What, what did I say? That. <laughs> no, 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 you can't. <laughs> well, it was close to that. It was basically like, there's no girl that if she said they had a crush on you that you wouldn't at least be flirtatiously oh, wait, no. intrigued. See, but now you have to because like, <clears throat> this is, this, I was joking just now and now it seems like I really did say that. What I uh, what did, you will try to say it well, like I said it at the diner without like outing the specific people I was talking about. You said there's no girl that you'd know of, regardless of how they're attached to you or how you know them, that if they dragged you into a closet when you were drunk and said have sex with me, that you would say no to. Right. There's no girl <laughs> in the world that could do that. I really, you know what? I want to just take all this back. This never happened. We never, I never went to a diner with you, <laughs> sir. sir. <laughs> this is this is hearsay. Order, order. I just think that, like, I also know that I would never put myself in that situation to be pulled into a closet drunk by somebody you'd like that. I say, but okay. Yeah, it's, I think it is, like, uh, I have a willpower problem. Yeah. You know, I do, so... I mean, I'm on the opposite spectrum of that. I'm very cautious. I do have friends that I consider like relatives. But at even at me, the extreme, let's say this guy was the extreme version, which is me. Uh, if a lady friend of mine said that she had a crush on me, I would at the very least entertain the idea, the notion of possibly uh, doing something romantic with them. Even if they were with somebody that you loved? Oh, no, no, no. I'm talking about a single friend. Oh wow! Yeah. So your like your craziest notion is like if a friend of yours said I like single, you, single, yeah, you would be like, I wonder. Oh, what yeah, it, is. it would be like I would have like already. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The thing is, th- we didn't even really realize it when we started this podcast. We are two polar opposite. Uh, like we are. <laughs> how do I say this without sounding like a math nerd? But there's the norm, and then there's standard deviations from the norm. And 95% of the population exists within two standard deviations. And we, I'm extremely to one side, even past that, and you're extreme to the other side. So I guess it makes a good, for a good podcast. Yeah, but we're we, both, even, we really did not know that until yeah, we started this. Right, but we're both sociopaths in completely different ways. Interesting. You're acidic and I'm basic. Love it. Thank you. I really do appreciate you saying that. The I really standard do. deviation shit. That really was nice. Yeah. I really I even know. Do that. And I'd yeah. appreciate it, <laughs> frankly, if you put your dick and nipples away. I really would. <laughs> because yeah. it is more than about that time. <laughs> so our advice to you is uh, go for it. Yeah. I mean, just start flirting with them. Send them some winky faces. Yeah. Do, it's always fun to have someone in your life whose like, name excites you when you get an email or a text message from yeah. them. I, like when your phone vibrates and you're like, ooh, I really hope it's that name. And then seeing that name, that name is very exciting. Now you know. Now you know the joy of it, right? Well, well I always knew the joy of it. But now you're back. <laughs> it's so... I live text to text. I really do. Right. Did you ever get that flip phone? You know what? It's... um. I think I'm going to do it. Yeah. I just, I'm, I'm gonna just wait. not ever going to do it. I, no, I want to wait till we go to LA. I'm, we're moving yeah, to yeah. LA. Yeah, push it, push it. Keep, here's, be, here's the thing. Here's a, here's a good compromise. I'll download and use Tinder when you get a flip phone. Absolutely not. <laughs> it's more than unfair. <laughs> it's highway robbery. You're fleecing me. <laughs> you can't make things fair and equal. I get my way. You're giving me pennies on the dollar. My dad taught me that I get my way. <laughs> my daddy's going to get me the new iPhone. <laughs> He'll probably make one that flips. I'll get two iPhones. So, Lily, make turn this guy into a name that excites you. Turn him into a person who you can't wait 
to see how he reacts to your flirtatious email. And it's always fun to fire that first bullet. Like, whoa, I just, there's like that status quo of flirtatiousness. And then there's like different levels. And like yeah. when you kick it up a notch and you put your phone away. I call it swinging the bat. Yeah. Every see. text is a pitch. Yeah. And then it's just like, do I want, and like, oh man, I'll draft a text that's like, oh man, that's pretty, that's pretty ballsy thing to say. That's pretty forward. But it's like, you know what? I'm just going to swing at the pitch. Let's What's the worst that can happen? Oh man. So please swing away. Fire away, fire Throw away. away. I'm bulletproof, Oof. nothing to lose. I, I agree that this one was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, but that does not take away a lot of the ones. The earlier. other ones were gold. <laughs> More than gold. Okay, That's now we are definitely... Feeling like gold. Sometimes I sold. Nope, nope. Slick we're just too gold. tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really late. This is way past my bedtime. Uh, let's go eat dinner and watch football. That sounds good. Let's download Tinder for you, too. <laughs> Not New York. Not New York. Uh, I wanted to say, once again, thanks to Max and Evan for the opening theme song, one of my favorites. And uh, the closing one comes from a guy named Sam. You can send your own theme song submissions to if I were you show at gmail.com. That's the email for anything. If you have a guest idea, if you have constructive criticism that says that we're annoying when we sing, or, uh, or uh, ideas or tips about the show... Uh, please uh, email us in. Email us in. Email us in. <laughs> you dick. <laughs> and thanks to the last five people who gave us good reviews on iTunes or just any review on iTunes. It doesn't have to be good. We yes, just it really. Does. Pre- okay, it has to be good. Uh, Grendel Ward. Grendel Ward. What? Soren Climac. Zishang Casey. John O'Neill. Matthew W. Valaich. Wow, I didn't realize how difficult those were to pronounce, but it thanks, guys. It sounds like you made them up. <laughs> it sounds like you're having a stroke. <laughs> I'm having a stroke. Matthew a Wallach. Matthew Wallach. <laughs> All right. Uh, so if you guys do want to give us nice, positive, or any reviews on iTunes, we'd appreciate it. We'll uh, give you guys shout-outs uh, as often as we do these episodes. Anything else we wanted to add? Uh, uh, show at Littlefield. Oh, yeah. We got a live show at Littlefield, a uh, live podcast. The first live podcast was so fun. We we're excited to do another one. We also have a live tour coming up. Correct. And yeah. you can go to collegehumor.com slash tour. Can't you? Uh, I don't know if it's that. I think jakeandamir.com is a good place to see because we posted about it there. All right. But we're going, to like, you're going all over the uh, East Coast, Boston, Vermont, D.C., and Philadelphia, and we're going to the Midwest, Minnesota, and Milwaukee, not Milwaukee. We're going to Ann Arbor, Chicago, Madison, Madison and, Minneapolis. and Minneapolis. So it'd yeah. be cool to see you guys there. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. Enjoy the rest. What am I saying? <laughs> Enjoy the show. <laughs> Enjoy the show. Listen to it again. <laughs> it's better the second time, I assure you. <laughs> hey, if I were you, I would tell you that. I would do that to you today, and it's alright.